I remember, Mom, you said to me one time, and Jamie, you're probably the same way. She sat me down one time, and she goes, you know, I really worry about you because you don't know how to give the world a bird when they need it. And you don't have a good enough poker face. And at first, you know, I laughed at that, but it's so true. And Jamie, you're probably a lot like that, too. And, and, and sensitive people are like that, but I've learned, Mom, I'm doing pretty good at giving birds lately. <laughs> I am so slow that when you said that, I was thinking, you're going to give live birds to oh, no, people? Oh, no, she meant the middle finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when she corrected my yeah. thinking, I thought, oh, my God, that is great. Right. And she it's said it's true. true. Marshawn could never say no to anything. Right. I had to toughen her up. Right. And she's saying for everybody watching, this is her toughed up version. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, as, that's as far as she can go this is her pretty pathetic huh mom no no she says this has turned into something beyond what I could see right and I just wanted to let you know that you saw it you went for it even though nobody was supporting you including so, dad yeah. yes she says I want to thank you she said, your sister was a good support. Yeah, I miss her. She misses you. And she says, this will come to an end. Thank you. But she likes to talk about herself. Oh, and yeah. so she's saying her experience, she calls it heaven. Okay. That's her term for where she is. Okay. And she says, it goes by many different names. But heaven is a place where only love and the variations of love exist. Okay. She said, it's not like Earth. Earth has the presence of love and all the variations all the way down to the extremes where it is absence of love and all the variations of that. She said, so it's more like coming here and having the whole set of colors, all of your five senses, you don't want to say there's six, <laughs> five senses, and your your thoughts, your emotions, and all your memories, like you have on Earth. Mm -hmm. But when you carry them over, they turn into something more vibrant, more useful. And she says, here there is no suffering. Earth is for. Wow. And let that one sit in. So is death something to fear, Mom? No. Suffering is what you created to be. And she said, I, I could see that when I was alive. She said, I just couldn't decide how to control it. I would get angry at my suffering. And I would pack it up and put it away. And therefore, it wouldn't burden me. But I knew it sat there on the shelf. But really, the suffering comes from believing that you're separate. And when you're here in heaven, you know there's no, there's no difference between one and the other. And we're all connected. And there is no suffering. What She's do you do with yourself with no suffering? <laughs> have joy right <laughs> she shows me that there's a really um incoherent kind of energy exchange that happens between whomever is in heaven and it's like um that is the strangest metaphor yeah keep it coming I have a frying pan and I'm going to put uh, water, butter, like a slab of butter in it. And she says um, it will melt, you know, and it will in a liquid form kind of cover the entire surface and it will level itself out naturally without you having to turn and roll and move it all out. It will level itself out naturally. 
So that every surface that's flat is going to have the butter on top of it without even asking for it, without demanding. It's getting its needs met. And then every surface that's high won't have the butter on it because that's what it needs. And she says heaven is that way. It, it levels itself out without you knowing or without you being a part of the action to do. The you don't have to, to move do so. the pan around at all. You can just relax. And she says, and earth is all about the moving the pan. I can't get enough. I can't make it work. I need it up on the hill. Mm -hmm. I need to do this. Now I have to have more because I can't make it work. Mm -hmm. And she says, and that's the phase she sees us stuck in is this materialistic needing more to make it level out when she feels like if you just clean the pan and treat the pan well, which is earth, that you wouldn't have to hustle so hard to make everything level out. Hustle. I love it. Mom, do you feel like um, where you are now looking at where you were, and we, where I am, did you make your life harder than it had to be? Yes. So we kind of choose our own suffering. It, yes. <laughs> She's got one arm out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not God's doing. Mm -hmm. That's not a punishment. Mm -mm. She says that is you choosing to suffer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like with your death, Mom, and Griffin's death, of course, I fall into humanness all the time because I'm human and I grieve. And sometimes I don't know what, when it's going to hit me and why. And I get in my funks or whatever you want to call it and don't even know why. But I look at death completely differently now after talking to you and Jamie and, and Griffin and doing my research and what I'm capable of looking into. So I look at it a lot less painless than I used to. You know, she said the act of dying might be painful, right? That part scares me, but the act of death is not right. The airplane you take to get there, the flight you book to get there. That's what that's what I have fear of not getting there, you know, and also you always want to have your house in order. You know, like you ever feel finished to go, you know. She says, I don't think you ever do feel finished to go. Right. Maybe on special occasions. Right. And there are some that know that they are going. But I like that bit of not knowing what heaven is. She said, Marshawn, I think if people on earth understood where they went, a lot more people would be headed our way. Uh, by their own hand. Because it's that. It's that loving. Right. Forgiving. They wouldn't fight it as hard and we're not going to promote suicide, mom, but <laughs> be like, they wouldn't put up with this. Right. Right. Is heaven the same for you as it is for Griffin, as it is for Benny Perrin, as it is for Junior Seau? Or is it different for everybody? Is it it's a, different for everybody. Is it a lot based on your belief system that you had when you were here? She says the beginning is based on the belief system. Almost like you carry that over. Pretty soon it clears, and then you go, I remember now. Is it like you I go remember. home, Mom? Is it going home? Yes. She said, yes, it is. And then she says, the way that my heaven is different is because I enjoy and like different things. Right. So I create that for myself. I manifest that for myself, just like on Earth. You like a different style of house, a different location of living. Your world is different to you than your neighbor's world. 
Okay, mom. Okay, but as far as being different, let's just get into basics. Like the sky is blue for us here as humans. Well, let's say the majority of people think the sky is blue. Are the colors the same to you and Griffin? Are they vibrant for everybody? Vibrant for everybody. They're not the same colors as on Earth. Are they the same for everybody experiencing them? Yes. Mom, does anyone get to heaven and not like it? <laughs> She's never heard of it. Wow. 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 Um, do you have ever the feeling like if you wanted to meet someone like you were a John Lennon fan and and you thought of him and manifested, could you meet anyone you wanted, Mom? Elvis. Yeah, Do we Elvis. want to meet Elvis. I loved Elvis. <laughs> she said I... Jamie can't talk to Elvis. Why won't he come through for her? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to bring him next him. time. Watch. Oh, my God. Don't, guys. I, I will lose my mind. Him. That was my first, like, crush when I was little. Yes. I saw we had TV so many of his records. My parents were having a dinner party, and he was on TV, and I'd never seen him before. And I couldn't stop staring at him. I didn't know who he was or anything, but he had that, right? And I was just a girl. Yeah. I had a framed I wanted to like, bury photograph him. of him <laughs> yeah. in my bedroom. <laughs> right. Exactly. Chris, now you know how to bring to make Jamie weak at her knees. Yeah. Elvis. <laughs> so, Griffin, if I could pop you one, I would. He's like, I'm gonna go get him. Yeah. Um, yes. Mom, you can, can hear you him. meet anyone you want and it's not like here where you'll feel weird like oh they'll think i'm weird or it's not like that she said it's definitely not like that she's the, the same kind of character that they played on earth identity they had on earth is not the same identity that they have here they're now merged with their higher consciousness okay okay wow wow what is your favorite thing about where you are, Mom? Wait, so I asked a question in my head. Sorry, I should have Do done it. that out loud. That's okay. So all the incarnations that we have, like let's say I have 30, you have 25, and Griffin has 50. So all those lives that are on at whatever, whatever time frame, all go back to that higher consciousness. So we might dream that there's like billions of people on earth, but there might only be like a million higher consciousness beings in heaven. Do you see what I'm saying? She's agreeing because then she's showing me out of all the higher consciousness, the collective groups of higher consciousness create soul families. Okay. And of course, each higher consciousness, you know, is sometimes in different soul families for different groups. It's right. not as cut and clear as black and white. Like I could be in yours, but not Griffin's. Griffin's is in yours, and Griffin's in somebody else, and that somebody could be in yours and Griffin's. But Can you add people to your soul family? It like layers and touches. Can you add people to your soul family, Mom, or is it in concrete? Um, it's not as concrete. It can grow and shift to meet the needs of what you're trying to develop or learn. I say we bring Jesus in ours. He's pretty big. <laughs> or is he in everyone's, kind of? It's kind of like God. She calls the energy of everything that is God. And um, and so if we take all those families and we find the commonality to that, it's the energy that is the collective whole, which is that intelligent source that many people refer to as God. Right. I just thought that was an interesting journey. I wanted to see how she saw it. Yeah. Did you get your answer, Jamie? Do you feel yeah. like you understand? Mom. Do you feel like, um, I was with April the giraffe giving birth to her little baby that was on TV, oh my God, they're so beautiful, at the New York Zoo, have you watched it, Jamie? It's a live camera feed, oh my God. I was reading about giraffes, they only sleep like 30 minutes a day. Isn't that crazy? 
So that's a wow. lot like death because you guys don't sleep or you don't need sleep, right? Correct. I feel like I've got to sleep to get ready to go home. It sounds exhausting not to sleep. <laughs> But but my point is, do you ever run out of things to do, Mom? Is it? No? Never? Yeah, she's already finding that funny. No. Okay. Never. From travel to connecting to those that she loves and the life that she was just in. Right. To connecting to those she loves and the incarnation from before or after, however you want to think right. about it. Like she has all of these connections to grow and manifest still. Right. It's not stopping her. And not, say it again. So your mom has time that she calls um, worship time. Oh, wow. Okay. I've never heard of anything like this before. But she says she has time set out in her experience, you know, where she provides worship, love, um, giving, prayer, affirmation. She just, I give the good love and good light to those I love or in return give to God. Wow. Like, so you would pray for me and your dog, you know, like your kids and Dylan or anyone you see that needs you? Yes. Wow. I love that, Mom. I love that. Um, wow. Wow. Do you, as, a, as the life you just came out of and that your grandson was there before you, how do you feel about that? Like, like we won't go off on a tangent, but... Have you had to encourage Griff, or do you feel like Griff got ripped off in this life, or what do you feel, Mom? She says Griffin is beautiful and whole. Okay. She says, I don't feel like he was ripped off. Okay. Because he now has that experience, and it was valuable. Right. And not only valuable to him, but now valuable to his brother, to you, and right. to his Everybody. friends. Yes. So she says, I've never felt that. She says, I do still see him as my grandson. Right. And as him needing me, which Griffin is saying, <laughs> doesn't. Right. <laughs> uh, he doesn't need her all the time. And boy, you know, when she came over, it was just like, she wasn't leaving him alone. Thank you, Mom. Don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> because what are you doing? I think it's funny. <laughs> because when you get to heaven, she's going to be your new backpack. I know, right? <laughs> a backpack. I love that analogy. That's hilarious. It's not a monkey on your back, just a backpack. Backpack, yeah. <laughs>